Hey, what's up? All right, so if you're doing code challenges, you really got to practice in something like CoderPad. You've got to try um, turning off certain features so that you can just practice writing the code from memory. If you're relying on the IntelliSense or code completion or any of that, it's going to get in the way, and then you're going to be like uh, a deer in headlights, and you're going to be like, I don't remember how to write this. So I'm going to run through how to get started with this. So this is just app um, coderpad.io slash sandbox. I've used this for a few technical interviews. There's some customization on the bottom. You can be on standard or Vim mode. I'm on Vim mode since I'm practicing Vim mode. I've disabled IntelliSense. I've disabled auto close brackets. There are some shortcuts. Save will just cause it to run. So that's kind of nice because um, I instinctively do save a lot. And they do support multiple cursors with the option key, which is kind of cool. All right, so you're going to select your language, switch to a different language. I'm going to go over to Swift 5. And then once I'm on Swift 5, I can just start writing some code here. So if we just hit Command S, that's going to save it and run it. And then you're going to see the output here. Now, the thing that's confusing is once you start having build errors or build warnings, they're going to like take over the console here. Um, I've had one interview where they disabled execution. I had another where they didn't. So it's going to depend. Hitting reset is going to give you a clean slate. It keeps appending. So the latest thing is going to be down at the bottom, which made it really confusing. Whenever I had errors, I was not prepared for that. So I would just prepare and understand how the tool works because that's going to really help you out. And I need to disable this because I don't want Grammarly in here. Okay, so... If I wanted to do a linked list that had an append, a delete, and some kind of count that's going to keep track of, how would I do that? How would I write that as quick as possible? Let's see how fast we can actually write this. So we're going to do a, we're going to stub it out. And I think the first thing that we're going to stub out is just the node. And we're going to make this generic on item. And then we just need to have a item, item, and then next. It's going to be an optional. We need an initializer that takes an item to make this faster to type. I'm going to use underscore. You might want description. That's an optional. I'm not going to do that right off the bat. And you might need something for equatable. I'm not going to do that right off the bat. All right, so next up, we're going to need our link list. Our first focus is stubbing. So just try and get something on paper first as quickly as possible. And then enhance it. Um, because you have very limited time. You don't have time to debug your link list. So if you get this wrong, you're going to be scratching your head and you're going to be out of time. And that's exactly how two of my <laughs> interviews went. Um, because I was like, oh, I know how to do link list. And then it was like, oh, I'm learning how to do link list again on the fly. Not the best time to do it. So we need a head, we need a tail, we're, we're going to need a count. And do I need an initializer? If we initialize everything like this, we shouldn't need an initializer, so that saves us a little bit of time. And here we're going to take in a node. Now I'm going to take in nodes of item type. We're going to append those, and then we're going to delete based on this. And this is because I use this for a doubly linked list for a LRU cache, and so having access to the node was beneficial for that scenario, but it might not be beneficial for everyone. So you need to decide how, how this is going to work out. So we've sort of stubbed it out <clears throat> and <clears throat> now we can go ahead and actually implement the algorithms and do stuff and hopefully get this working. So when we append in a link list, there's a, a base case and uh, that is when the head is equal to nil. In every other case, then we're going to do something else. 
So here we're going to append to tail and here head is the node. So it's our very first insertion. Appending to tail is pretty simple. We're just going to say tail dot next is equal to node. And then I am going to also make sure I clear out the nodes next pointer to nil to um, prevent cycles. But if you need to append lists, um, this has bitten me before. So I'll just, you'll have like stack frame crashes if you don't do this, if you, especially if you remove a node and reinsert it somewhere else in the list. That is prime for that. All right, and then every time we do an append, we always have to update tail because we're always adding on. If you're doing prepend, then it would go onto the, the front instead of the tail. And so we're just gonna say tail is gonna become, is gonna point to the new node. And then we have to do our, our counting for the count. And that is it. And so talking through as you do, this is really important. Um, talking before you actually write the code is probably important, but for a linked list, if this is like just an implementation detail, you just got to crank this out and just be like, I'm going to make a linked list um, so that I can do stuff. So for a single linked list, this is more complicated than a doubly linked list. We're going to have to iterate through all of the nodes. Um, and then we're going to have to do bookkeeping for head and tail. And in order to do that, we're going to need to know the previous and the next or the current. So in, in this situation, I'm going to just say var, var current is equal to head. That's our starting point. And then we're going to have a previous. Somehow I missed the equals. Previous is equal to, uh, and in this case, it's going to be nil, but I need to give it a type because otherwise the type system is going to complain. So maybe there's an easier way to do this, but. I'm not thinking there is. I guess I could write it in sort of reverse notation, but we're just going to write it like this. And then we're going to loop through. So we're going to use a while loop. I'm going to use the while let syntax, and we're going to get the next is equal to current dot next. That's just going to simplify some of the implicitly unwrapped optionals or, or just the optionals chaining and all of that. So then if, um, if node is equal to current, and you can define how this equa equatable is going to be. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. So we're just kind of stopping this out. Then we know that we found the node. And if that's the case, then what we need to do is delete the node. So to do that, we have to do a couple things. We need to say that um, current dot next is going to equal next dot next. So we're essentially skipping over one of the nodes. And then we also have to do our count minus equals because we've just removed something. And then we're going to break out because we've just removed something. All right. So that is the first part. The other thing that we need to do is we need to do bookkeeping on current and previous. And I should have done this from the start because it's easier to think about the logic. We're always going to set previous to current at the start of the loop. And then at the end of the loop, we're going to set current equal to next. All right, so that's going to keep things flowing. And then at the end of here, we are going to do our bookkeeping for if it's the head node. Here, we're going to just say delete it. This is our other edge case. And to do that, all we're going to do is head is equal to head dot next, and then count minus equals one because we've actually removed a node. And then if node is equal to tail, so our last edge case in this situation, we need that previous. And that's why we're doing all this bookkeeping to keep track of the previous node because we need to go back one to get it. We don't have a previous on our singly linked list. So we're going to say tail is equal to previous. And I think we're done implementing this. 
except we have build errors. So it's not equatable. So you're going to see right here is our first issue. If I save it again, so this is the first time I saved it. This is the second time I saved it. So you can sort of see that things sort of stack up. So if it's confusing to you, just save it, reset, um, or reset, then save, and you'll be good to go. So let's make the node equatable. And now again, this is something that you're gonna have to, to memorize. Um, it's gonna give us the suggestion. So you could just grab that or you can type it out yourself. My recommendation is just type it out from memory. So and it's gonna look something like this. I don't know if you actually have to give it the generic type here. I think it still works regardless. And then I'm just gonna do a quick and dirty one, which is just gonna check the actual objects, but depending on your scenario using the three equal signs, you might not wanna do it this way. Okay, so I saved it. What did I do? Okay, and then it's hard to know if I fixed it. So let's reset it, hit, hit save. Okay, so no problem. See the difference? Like it looked really gnarly and now it's not. Um, can we have top level code in here? Is this like a playground? That's a good question. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't done, a, I, I think you can. Um, Well, typo, linked, linked. And it wants actual nodes. So the more you practice something like this, the better you're gonna get. And doing code challenges in the actual editors is super useful. So it ran, but what does it actually look like? So we're not gonna see anything. So this is where if you make it print out, you can start looking at things or you can just start pulling out things. Like let's print out the head. What does that look like? Oh, amazing. <laughs> So how do we get this to print? Let's make this custom string um, convertible. You only need to do this if you're debugging. If you didn't write any problems, then you don't need to do this. And you can just keep going with the other algorithm. Um, so I would save doing description for later. I'm gonna use the guard let syntax here. So basically we're gonna unwrap it. If it's our base case, we're just gonna, this is our base case. Uh, we're, we're gonna recursively call this and then we're just going to um, print out a message here and then we'll call next here. We don't have any optionals, so that should be pretty cool. And then if I save it, see what happens. So now we see this. All right, so that's kind of cool. We're seeing some of the values they're printing out. Um, if I want a level up, then I can make the link list custom string convertible. And so if we do that, what's that gonna look like? Let's go down here. 
And this is whatever's going to be useful for you. So in this situation, I want to know a few things. And here I'm going to save some time and just do a no return. I'm just going to do a single line of text. And we're going to print out the head. Head. Tail. And then we're going to do a new line, a tab, and then head syntax pointing to, and then head. All right, and then I want to change this a little bit because I really want the item, and I really want the item here. Now, if we save it, we're getting a ton of warnings about string interpolation. And this is one of those things that I have a new trick that I just learned yesterday. I want to convert this to nil, and you have to write it like this. So we do the nil coalescing to nil, but we're converting, I think, um, as has higher precedence, so it's going to convert nil to as any, and that will satisfy the type checker and get rid of all these compiler warnings. We don't need an extra set of parentheses, so it's a little bit easier to type. And uh, hopefully I did everything right, but if I didn't, it's complaining about something. So let's find what line. So this is giving me the line and then the column. So line 83. It's just giving me a warning about this guy down here. Um, so let's just print out the list instead of the list head. And I'll save it. And now we see our new pretty format. Good to go. So hopefully that was helpful. That's how to um, debug this. That's how to get things going. We had a couple typos, but we got the overall structure. Um, just remember, it's like stub things out as quickly as possible. That's the most important part. And if you need, I would say... How I would approach this. Stub out the interface. And then I would say write the algorithm using the stubbed interface. Then I would implement each method to power the algorithm. And then test and debug with print statements. And manually run through the code. So that's kind of how I would approach this. You want to be as quick as possible, as efficient as possible. Do it without any assistance if you can. Like I have my notes here just in case I got stuck, um, but I shouldn't be looking at my notes as I'm, I'm working on these things if I want to remember it. If I always refer to my notes, I'm never going to be thinking about it. So if this is helpful, click the like button and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions down below.